call to order. At this point, let me acknowledge the presence of the following committee members, Senator Sherwin Gachalian. And with uh, this presence, I declare the presence of a quorum. May I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge our guests and resource persons attending today. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. I would like to recognize our distinguished guest from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Attorney Elmore O. Capule, Senior Assistant Governor and General Counsel, Attorney Charina B. Devera Yap, OIC Financial Inclusion and Consumer Empowerment Subsector, Ms. Maricris A. Salud, Deputy Director, Technology Risk and Innovation Supervision Department, BSP, Attorney Paul Christian J. Bailon, Deputy Director, Consumer Protection and Market Conduct Office, BSP, Acting Deputy um, Attorney Fatima Anjanet Ferrere Magtuba, Acting Deputy Director, Office of General Counsel and Legal Services, BSP, Attorney Phoebe Samantha S. Alanique, Legal Officer 3, Office of the General Counsel and Legal Services, BSP. From the Philippine National Police, we have Police Brigadier General Sidney Hernia, Police Major General Eric Noble, Director of the IDM. We also have uh, Police Colonel Nova G. De Castro, Police Lieutenant Colonel J. D. Guillermo, Police Lieutenant Colonel Robert D. Bongayon Jr., Police Lieutenant Colonel uh, Police Cur uh, Captain Romel Lainez. From the National Bureau of Investigation, we have Chief of the, the Chief of the Anti Fraud Division, H. A. Palmer U. Maliari, and Ms. Agrifina S. De La Cruz from their Legislative Liaison Unit. From the Department of Justice, we have Senior Assistant State Prosecutor Agnes Farida Bagaforo Arellano and Attorney Gerald Sosa of the DOJ Office of Cybercrime. From the Department of Trade and Industry, Industry we have Assistant Director Attorney Cheryl Carbonell, Consumer uh, uh, Protection and Advocacy Bureau. Also, Ms. Aliana Victoria Rivera, Chief Planning Specialist, Small Business Corporation. Uh, Mr. Ronald Rada, Chief Planning Specialist, Small Business Corporation, and the, the Legislative Affairs Officers of the DTI, Ms. Irene Forcadilla and Ms. Isabel Cebu. From the DICT, we have USEC, David L. Almirol Jr., Undersecretary for E-Government of the DICT, Ms. Aya Minas, Executive Assistant for E-Government, DICT, Ms. Jolina S. Cinco, Planning Officer 3 of the DICT, and from the Cybercrime Investigation Coordinating Center, CICC, USEC Alexander K. Ramos, Executive Director, ASEC Mary Rose Magsaysay, Deputy Executive Director of the CICC, Ms. Christine Flores, Head Executive Assistant of CICC, Attorney Jessica Crisostimo of CICC, and Jason Miranda, uh, of CICC. From the National Privacy Commission, we have Attorney Vida Zora, G. Bokar, Attorney 5, Policy Review Division, and Attorney Kate L. Horario, Attorney 3 of the Policy Review, Review Dis Division of the National Privacy Commission. From the National Economic Development Authority, we have Yusek Crystal Lin T. Uy of uh, Legislative Affairs of NEDA, also ASEC Sarah Lynn Dawai Dukanes, Policy Planning Group of NEDA. Assistant Director Melanie Grace Quintos, National Planning and Policy Staff NEDA, as well as Mr. Philip Libre, Technical Staff of NEDA. From the Anti Money Laundering Council, we have Attorney Maria Rea M. Santos Mendoza, Director of Anti Money Laundering Council, Attorney Eranio A. Dumale, Attorney Adrian A. Arpon, Attorney Anthony M. Morales and Ms. Marilis S. Nunez, all from the Anti-Money Laundering Council. From the private sector, we have from the Bankers Association of the Philippines, Associate Director Mr. Arnel N. Almaden. From GCash, um, Attorney Mark Anthony Almorao, to, um, their Advocacy Legal Counsel, together with Paul Raymond Velasquez, 
Jaime Sandinos Regalario, Re- Razil Maria Garrido, Alexander John Sibal, and Vince Fernandez. From the BDO, we have Attorney Federico P. Tangkongko, their Senior Vice President. And from the Bank of the Philippine Islands, we have Attorney Christine Lovely Red Alego, Head of Government Relations. And Maria Justine J. Mendoza, Public Policy Officer of the BPI. From Globe Telecom, we have Attorney Ariel Tubayan, Head Policy Division, Corporate and Legal Services Group of Globe Telecom. From SMART, we have Attorney Roy D. E. Bay, Vice President, Head Regulatory and External Affairs of, the Smart, of Smart Communication. And Attorney Kenneth Reganyon, Senior Manager, Regulatory and External Affairs of Smart Communication. We also have online from uh, Mr. Richard Lord, founder and head of Bank, F- Bank Fraud PH. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your time and presence. Uh, welcome to your Senate. For today's hearing, this committee will discuss three Senate resolutions, four Senate bills, and one House bill on bank, for- on bank frauds. For consistency, let us call this bill, these bills as AFASA or Anti-Financial Account Scamming Act. Uh, the, these are SRN 589, a resolution directing the appropriate committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the continued proliferation of bank related scams and frauds by yours uh, by Senate yours truly. Uh, SRN 217, a resolution directing the appropriate Senate committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the loan and sale of mobile wallet or e-wallet accounts with the end in view of protecting consumers in the country from cyber criminals by Senator Wynne Gachalian. Uh, a resolution directing the Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Currencies to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation into the proliferation of bank related fa- scams and frauds, resulting in loss of billions of Philippine pesos and adverse impacts on senior citizens by Senator Risa Ontiveros. Senate Bill Number 336, an act regulating the use of bank accounts, e wallets, and other financial accounts, providing Penalties thereof and for other purposes by Senator Grace Poe and Senator Lauren Legarda. Senate Bill Number 2039, an act prohibiting the money mules and other fraudulent acts involving bank accounts, e-wallets, and other financial records, uh, financial accounts, providing penalties thereof and for other purposes by Senator Juan Miguel Subiri. Senate Bill Number 2171, an act regulating the use of bank accounts, electronic wallets, and other financial accounts, providing penalties thereof and for other purposes by Senator Jingoy Estrada. Senate Bill Number 2306, an act defining and penalizing fraudulent activities involving bank accounts, e-wallets, and other financial accounts, for, and for the purposes, Senator General Senator Joel Villanueva, and House Bill Number 7393, an act regulating the use of financial accounts scamming act. The banking and finance sector is the life is the lifeblood of the economy. As such, the banking sector is inevitably imbued with the highest degree of trust. What happens if that trust is lost? Digital transactions and e-commerce experienced rapid growth in recent years as many Filipinos adapted to the safe and health protocols issued by the COVID-19 global pandemic. The BSP noted that at least 41 million Filipino adults have become part of the formal financial system, and in connection with this, e-money accounts rose by 16.8 million between 2019 and 2021. While digitalization and the widespread use of digital finance opened opportunities for the banking sector, it is also apparent that opportunists also devised new methods to take advantage of this emerging financial market. Proliferation of online scams threatens not only the potential of online banking, but also the stability of the banking system and the hard-earned money of the Filipino people. As the number of Filipinos using online payment platforms increase, so are the crimes related to digital financial transactions. A significant number of Filipinos have been targeted by digital fraud attempts and a portion of them eventually fall victim to it. The BSP received more complaints regarding online banking transactions compared to those related to using ATMs and credit cards, among others. The AMLC reported a rise in suspicious transactions in 2020, comprising acts of phishing, skimming, and transactions related to money mules. 
The SEC noted a significant rise in complaints related to online fraud committed by online lending platforms. Overall, 2% of the global GDP is lost due to cases of online fraud. The Philippines, being a rising tiger economy in the Asia-Pacific region, has the potential to be an economic powerhouse, and we cannot compromise this potential because of the loss of trust in our financial institutions due to cases of online fraud. The BSP released a memorandum mandating banks and other supervised financial institutions to adopt and implement effective measures for the protection of consumers, such as the institu institutionalization of responsive complaint and redress mechanism. Still, some, some victims find these measures insufficient. In the Philippines, the more common types of online scams that victimize our fellow citizens are phishing, vishing, and smishing. Phishing is done via email, vishing by phone, and smishing by SMS. The number of phishing attacks in the Philippines during the first half of 2022 already surpassed the number of attacks in the whole year of 2021. In that period, over 1.8 million attacks have been detected compared to 1.34 million attacks in 2021. Among the most prevalent types of phishing attacks in the country were targeted at payment systems, e-commerce shops, and local bank and local banks. Data from Kaspersky Kaspersky, yes. Data from Kaspersky Security Network revealed that cases of financial phishing attempts in the Philippines from February to April of 2022 were highest in Southeast Asia. Other forms, in fraud, other forms of fraud in the country are boiler room operation, emergency or grandparent scam, card skimming, card shimming, email spoofing, check over payment scam, surrendered account scam, and account turnover, and account takeover. Let us watch some of the recorded scams that transpired recently that affected our kababayans. wala sa akin, kalahating milyon. Pinag-ipunan ko po yun sa napakatagal na panahon para po sa mga anak ko yun. Video, tanong ko lang po, bakit nawala sa dalibo ko? Sinong kumuha? Nagilabang ko po pera yung maaari naman po sana ay balik ninyo ang aking perang nawawala. Para usapo ko yun, hindi naman para sa akin, matanda na rin ako. Sorao ang nakuha sa bank account ni Rose, hindi niya tunay na pangalan nang nagpanggap umanong taga-security bank. Ako lang yung nag-iipon sa amin, tsaka may work. Bakit wala kayong ginawa? Sana naman yung nireport ko sa inyo to, finraise nyo na lang yung account o kaya sinawagan nyo yung bank kasi alam naman nila yun eh. Pinaghirapan namin ang ilang taon nyo. Sobra. Hindi makapaniwala si Shasta na sa isang iglap lang, mawawala ang libo-libong perang nasa bank account niya dahil sa isang online scam. Isa siya sa mga depositor ng BDO na nabiktima ng isa umanong Mark Nagoyo at naglimas ng 50,000 piso niya at inilipat sa Union Bank. Pambili ng gamot ang nawala naman sa 80 anyo sa retiratong profesor na si Nancy Rotor Peralta na ginawan pa raw ng online banking account ng scammer para makuha ang kanyang 100,000 na ipon. Dapat protektahan nila ang interes ng mga nagbabangko lalo na sa mga matatandang paparis ko na wala nga ang kaalam-alam dyan sa online banking na yan. Video, tanong ko lang po, bakit nawala sa dalibo ko? Sinong kumuha? 
Naghirapan ko pong pera yung maaari naman po sana ay balik ninyo ang aking perang nawawala. Marawas hapo ko yun, hindi naman po para sa akin. Matanda na rin po ako. Sana naman makonsensya kayo. Tatlong kapatid kong puro. Senyor, ako ang tumutulong sa mga kapatid ko. Kapatid ko, diabetic. Kapatid ko, so disabled. Sa loob ng bahay ng Target, tumambad ang isang desktop na nasuriin ng MBI ay naglalaman ng mga fake websites ng iba't ibang bangko na ginagamit kumano sa phishing at cyber fraud. Dito na inaresto ang umaring hacker na si Denmark Resostomo alias Mang Kepweng sa cyberspace. The people shown before you in the video are only a small number of the many aggrieved victims who fall prey to these opportuni op opportunistic acts every day. Those who, there are those who suffer in silence, so this committee will be their voice. Because of the lack of a regulatory framework that penalizes these scammers, there are and there will be more victims in the foreseeable future. Even as we speak, there are individuals being victimized by these scammers who seize every vulnerable opportunity available to them. We cannot watch from the sidelines as scammers take advantage of the people. Let us be your voice. You are heard by this committee and we are one in your plight in the fight against scammers. We are here for you. As these scammers take advantage of the victims, they also rattle their victims' trust in our banking and financial institutions. Trust being the currency of the banking system, must be well earned. Given the proliferation of online fraudsters, it is imperative that we strengthen our efforts to keep scammers at bay. Currently, we have the following laws to fight online banking fraud. RA-11765 Financial Products and Services Consumer Protection Act. RA-11934 Cyber uh, Subscriber Identity Module Registration Act. RA-10175 Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. As criminal elements adapt to legislation to perpetuate fraud, there is a need to legislate new laws to keep them off track, such as the proposed AFASA or the Anti-Financial Account Scamming Act. This measure will reinforce and earn back the public's trust in our financial institutions. Being a key component of our economy, our banking and financial institutions must remain strong and, res and responsive to the threat. We should not give these scammers an avenue and more time to victimize our people. We must act now, take a stand with us in protecting our banks, our economy, and the Filipinos. Wala pong lugar ang mga scammers sa bagong Pilipinas. Due to the sensitivity of the issues we will discuss, I would like to inform my fellow senators that we will be having an executive session later at the end of the hearing. All matters related to individual cases will have to be discussed in the said executive session as we don't want to disrupt law enforcement measures being undertaken to apprehend and prosecute scammers. And we'd also like to include in this discussion Senate Bill number 2407, an act prohibiting money mules and other fraudulent acts committed involving financial accounts, providing penalties, and for other purposes, filed by Senator Wynne Gacharyan, who is also a victim of uh, financial fraud. So he's uh, very passionate about this topic. So, okay. I, and I'd like to, at this point, I'd like to recognize uh, Senator Gacharyan uh, for his opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, since you mentioned that I was a victim, uh, let me just um, uh, start off by first, thank you very much for hearing this uh, bill and also hearing the various resolutions on this topic. It's really about time that we put uh, a lot of emphasis, uh, ask our regulators what are the safeguards that they've been implementing, considering that we have already implemented or, or approved the financial uh, consumer protection law. Uh, so we want to hear from our regulators, from our banks, from our enforcers, 
how this law is being used in order pro to protect our consumers. But going to that experience, Mr. Chairman, I, I was a victim of um, uh, financial fraud, except that I wasn't lured or fooled by phishing or vishing or mishing. It was, I don't know what the technical term is, but it was the banks who were fooled in uh, uh, to change. They were fooled. Uh, to change the personal information that was recorded in their computers. My personal, inf personal information uh, that were recorded in their computers. And what happened there is uh, somebody pretended to be Senator Gachalian, uh, requested to change the uh, cell phone number. So in effect, when, when my cell phone number was changed, I couldn't receive the OTP anymore. But I can, I, I remember I was in a hearing like this and I was getting a lot of messages uh, from uh, Union Bank at that time um, informing me if I was changing my, my, my cell phone number. Uh, but obviously I was in a hearing, I couldn't attend to my, to my cell phone. And uh, after I think four or five hours, uh, I started getting um, messages that uh, my credit card was being charged X amount. No? Um, I think it started off with 100,000, 200,000. Then eventually I was charged with a million worth, worth of uh, alcohol, no? high-end alcohol. And uh, apparently the modus of uh, this type of um, uh, criminal syndicate is they buy high-end alcohol and sell it half the price or even uh, lower than that no? because it's a fast-moving uh, item. So with that experience, Mr. Chairman, I, I wasn't the one who answered the call, but it was the banks. No? And uh, in my mind, um, I think my first instinct is how come the banks were fooled? No? And, um, and uh, what are the remedies accorded to uh, bank clients who experience the same? Of course, I was a senator, so I was given fast attention and quick um, uh, quick remedy, but how about our ordinary citizens uh, who experience the same? No? And uh, so I remember calling up the BSP at that time, and we, uh, uh, with all due respect, we got very vague answers on how this type of um, fraud is being uh, treated and what kind of redress and what kind of uh, um, remedy our ordinary consumers can 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 um, can uh, um, can tap into in order to um, in order to um, get their money back or somehow cancel all of these transactions. Uh, unfortunately, at that time we got some vague answers. No, so that led us to file that financial uh, consumer protection law in order to clarify all of these things. But we admit that this is a new law and we want to understand how this law is being implemented in light of all of these things happening. And uh, with that experience, we also want to understand from uh, the BSP and also from the other regulators, what protection are we giving our con financial consumers? No? And what, where can our financial consumers go to if ever their banks are not giving them any attention, are not giving them the right protection, um, and uh, what are the rules being implemented in order for our financial consumers to be protected. No? So these are the questions that we want to understand uh, so that our, our financial consumers, our bank depositors, uh, will continue to have confidence in the banking system. This is confidence in the banking system. They're doing... They're doing transactions with the bank, they're putting their money, they're getting their credit cards from the bank because they trust our banks. But if, if fraudsters can fool the banks to change personal numbers, then that trust will be eroded eventually. You know? And uh, that's why we want to understand from this hearing, uh, what reforms have we undertaken in light of all of of my personal experience and all of these things uh, happening. Obviously, it's still happening right now. No? From the video that our chairman um, showed earlier, it's still happening right now. No? So um, the next question is, how do we stop it? What type of laws do we need to implement in order to stop this from happening, especially to our ordinary constituents who 
who work very hard to earn every single penny in their deposit. So once again, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, th thank you, Senator, at, uh, for your insights on this uh, measure. Uh, given that the Senate is a collegiate body of records and is requested by our good majority floor leader, Joel Villanueva, I would like to manifest that we put uh, Senator Gachelian's uh, submitted opening statement into the records as part of our discussion. Thank you. Uh, before we begin discussions, kindly allow me to make some ru house rules to ensure an orderly and us in this fight against online frauds and scams. Thank you very much. Uh, for purposes of this hearing, only PNP and the BSP will be asked to make a presentation. The PNP will discuss the types of online slash internet bank fraud slash scams being perpetrated against the public, apprehension statistics and measures being undertaken by the PNP cybercrime group, as well as difficult, their difficulties in apprehending uh, criminals. After the PNP, BSP will make a presentation on their proposed solution, which is the Anti-Financial Account Scamming Act. I would like to ask my colleagues to ask questions only after the two presentations are finished. Further, we will not discuss specifics in this public hearing. Should, should uh, my colleagues want to discuss a specific bank fraud case, please ask during the executive session later. I would like to call on the PNP to deliver their presentation on the modus operandi of online bank fraudsters. Without, we can now start the public hearing for AFASA. So at this point, I think if uh, the, you, you may proceed with your presentation, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Your Honor, uh, before we present our presentation, I'd like to uh, inform this committee that the data that we will be using in this presentation are the incidents reported only to the anti-cybercrime group. So uh, other uh, incidents reported to other government agencies, just like the NBI, the CICC, and other uh, government agencies are not included in the uh, uh, presentation. The statistics or the incidents reported to other agencies are not included in our statistics. Uh, Your Honor, please allow us to present. Cybercrime is going to be already accelerating rapidly even before the pandemic hit the world in 2020. While the global health crisis was expected to make people safer through lockdowns, the situation plus the drastic shift to digitization instead sparked greater momentum for criminals which enabled them to exploit new and more intricate ways to victimize people through scam. Inag-iingat ng PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group ang publiko mula sa anumang uri ng cryptocurrency scam. May babala ang PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group sa mga makakatanggap ng mensaheng ikaw ba ang nasa video? Huwag na huwag daw yung ikiklik dahil isa po yung scam. The scammer's way of disrupting safe and secure online transactions have drastically evolved in the past few years. From January to August 2023, the ACG has seen a dramatic rise in new cyber financial crimes with online selling scam, investment scam, ATM fraud or phishing, call scam or phishing, employment scam, loan scam, package scam, hijack profile, accommodation scam, and love scam. Online selling scam has been recorded the most prevalent type of fraud in many digital payment systems, including money service business provider or e-wallet. From January to August 2023, this modus operandi has victimized 3,615 individuals with an estimated total loss of 69 million pesos. 
Most of victims are from age group 21 to 40 and are mostly self-employed. Another emerging modus operandi is investment scam, which involves the illegal sale or purported sale of financial instruments. Individuals of ages 41 to 50 are frequently targeted as victims and they are mostly unemployed individual. ADM or credit card fraud is the unauthorized use of a credit or debit card or similar payment tool to fraudulently obtain money. Credit and debit card numbers can be stolen from unsecured websites or can be obtained in an identity theft scheme. Most victims belong to 41 to 50 years old and are government employee. Cold scam or vishing, also known as voice phishing, is a type of social engineering attack where fraudsters try to get sensitive information, such as passwords or credit card details, from the victim by using a telephone and pretending to be a trustworthy entity, such as a bank or government agency. Most victims belong to 21 to 30 years old and are mostly unemployed. Employment scam perpetrated by individuals or organizations posing as recruiters or hiring agencies offering or promising attractive jobs and big money to people seeking for job opportunities. Most victims belong to 21 to 30 years old and are mostly self-employed. Loan scam is a type of financial fraud or scam in which individuals or entities pose as legitimate lenders or loan providers to deceive people into borrowing money under false pretenses. Most victims belong to 41 to 50 years old and are mostly self-employed. Package scam, also known as a parcel scam or shipping scam, is a type of fraud in which scammers deceive individuals by sending them unsolicited packages or parcels. Most victims belong to 21 to 30 years old and are mostly unemployed. Hijacking profile or ID theft scam is an infiltration to a particular social media account in which after gaining access to it, the unknown perpetrator will send messages to its relatives and friends asking a favor to send or lend him or her for some money. Most victims belong to 21 to 30 years old and are mostly government employee. Accommodation scam. Cyber criminal or cyber criminals will pretend as a legitimate establishment offering services such as processing of online accommodation in hotels, restaurants, and resorts. The victim will later discover that the service they availed is a scam upon checking in at the establishment. Love scam. A person is tricked into believing they are in a romantic relationship with someone they met online. In fact, their other half is a cyber criminal using a fake identity to gain enough of their victim's trust to ask or blackmail them for money. The proliferation of this modo operandi has successfully bombarded the country's cyber financial situation, resulting in financial loss. For January 1 to August 2023, victims have lost a total of 155 million 204,358 pesos to online scammers. Despite our strong desire and efforts to hold scammers accountable for their crimes, some complaints cannot be filed in court due to the difficulty of tracing and identifying perpetrators. Another difficulty in filing cybercrime cases is the tedious process of obtaining necessary data from banks and financial institutions, leading to victims withdrawing their complaints. The alarming trend accelerated with the availability of social media and online payment platforms which highly favors scammers as they can easily exploit their targets and obtain money without hassle and under the cloak of anonymity. The widely used platform by scammers is the Facebook or Messenger with 6,702 cases followed by WhatsApp and Telegram. Gcash tops the list or is the most preferred mode of payment followed by Union Bank and BDO. Most of the victims are in the age range of 21 to 40 years old. This age group could be actively using online financial transactions. The number of complaints received by the ACG reveals that women are most likely victims of online scam. Notably, Unemployed individuals, self-employed individuals, and businessmen are deemed highly vulnerable to online scams. As these data suggest that humans are the weakest link in our existing cyber financial situation, 
The PNP ACG remains firm in its resolve to provide all Filipinos a cyberspace where they are free to learn, socialize, and do business through conducting continuous anti-cybercrime operations, ensuring strengthened cybercrime investigations, implementing public awareness campaigns, and encouraging partnerships with the community and concerned agencies. Uh, that ends our presentation, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, General uh, General Hernia. Sir, I would like to call on the BSP to deliver their presentation on uh, AFASA. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <clears throat> now I will try to make this as brief as possible. So what we're talking here is the Anti-Financial Account Scamming Act. Now, essentially, uh, this bill... Yeah, this bill is intended to ensure that the public will trust our financial system. As was shown earlier in the movie, a lot of our uh, countrymen are being victimized by online frauds. And as such, they might lose confidence in our financial system, especially our uh, the fact that we are now into electronic banking, electronic transactions. Now, uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, next slide. The fact that we already have, as mentioned by the chairman, uh, next slide, a lot of laws on this, specifically the uh, Cybercrime Law of 2012, the same registration, and even the financial consumer, is not a guarantee that we can protect the consumers because it is constantly evolving. Now, when we had the Cybercrime Law in 2012, it was designed more to protect systems. But this time, what's happening is that the individual account holders are being targeted by scammers, no longer penetrating the systems of institutions, but individual persons who are being targeted, being defrauded. Because of the developments in this type of frauds, we have to come up with specific criminal law to address this type of frauds. Next slide. Now, of course, uh, we are very grateful that the uh, Congress passed the we call the Financial Consumer Protection Act. Next slide. Now, the FCPA is actually very important, as was explained by uh, Senator Wynn. But unfortunately, while it provided a framework to protect the financial consumers, there are gaps which that law cannot address in itself. Specifically, the extent of cybercrime being committed using accounts. When we talk of accounts, we talk of credit card accounts, we talk of... Uh, e-wallets, we talk of other accounts, Gcash, all of these things, being targeted using the latest techniques in uh, social engineering and the use of money mules. Now, that, in effect, is already different from what the FCPA has initially envisioned. So we need a more specific criminal law to target these types of frauds. Okay. So next slide. So what we want to regulate now is the financial accounts. Now, this is the target of criminals. This is the target of fraudsters. They want to use your financial accounts through social engineering so that they can take over and use that account or transfer it. So we are looking at targeting money mules, those who use these accounts for illegitimate purposes. And then social engineering schemes like phishing, mishing, bishing. So these are the types of transactions which we would like to criminalize and to be imposed penalties. Okay, next. Now, of course, uh, making them criminal is one thing, meaning we are addressing the aspect of deterring criminals. But even if we will deter criminals to criminal sanction, of course, there are two other weaknesses. Number one is the institutions the institutions. And then secondly, the privacy laws, bank secrecy. So that's why, next slide, I will no longer go into the details of money muling. It was already illustrated during the movies. 
I'll go straight to the salient features. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Okay. Now, I'll go back, please. Proportionality. Okay. Now, we all know that uh, there are complaints that how were the accounts penetrated. Now, of course, it can be attributed. So, as a matter of fact, in our complaints, a lot of them were victimized and they gave away their personal information. Now, of course, you cannot just fault the institutions, the banks, for that because fault can be attributed to the consumer. Now, how do we now protect the consumer if that happens? Now, one of the provisions that we would like is the concept of, we call it, putting minimum standards by which financial institutions operating these types of accounts should adhere to. So there should be a minimum of, let's say, a multi-factor authentication, a certain standard, which if they fail to meet, then automatically they are presumed to be liable to, uh, to return the funds by which they were defrauded. So in effect, we are now putting a more stringent rule on the institutions. And it is proportional because it will depend on the sophistication of the institution. The more sophisticated they are, of course, the higher the expectations. The lesser sophistication, well, it can be lowered. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, now, again, another issue that we have encountered is, as again, was shown in the film, their bank accounts were penetrated. Okay. Now, in phishing, mishing, bishing, they do not just try to defraud holders of ordinary GCash or credit cards, or the money mules do not just use ordinary accounts. What, what if they start using bank accounts? As a matter of fact, we have seen that. If they start using bank accounts, then we will hit a blank wall because of our existing bank secrecy laws. Now, of course, it would not, it would be illogical if we will only protect those who are holding non-bank accounts. But once they cross the bank accounts, then we will close that. So one of our proposal here is to, well, for the, uh, to in, in order to ensure that there are a lot of safeguards, is to initially limit the authority to look into accounts, specifically bank accounts, to the BSP. So BSP will be given an authority to investigate cases in this particular law money mules using a bank account as a money mules, missing, etc., and for BSP to look into these types of accounts, specifically bank deposits and other accounts, and to be able to issue cybercrime warrants. But of course, the BSP is not uh, really a law enforcement agency, so essentially, the BSP will also rely on other cybercrime units of the NBI, PNP. So what we're envisioning here is that if you commit this type of fraud, you cannot just jump into a bank account and then you have immunity. So we have to have a bigger jurisdiction to go after fraudsters of this type. Okay, next slide. Okay, so, yeah. And then uh, what happens if BSP will be given that authority? Now, those two things that I have mentioned are very important. A uh, higher standard of diligence and features to be imposed on financial institutions and the authority to look into deposits and other accounts. Why are these very important? Because this law will complement the financial uh, products consumer protection law, meaning the FCPA law, the consumer protection law, needs more teeth. And it needs another law to put more teeth so that if you are a financial consumer, you file a complaint, against this type of frauds, there are additional obligations of institutions and we can look into accounts so that it will, it will be ultimately beneficial to the financial consumer. So essentially, other than that, uh, well, we will have additional sanctions, higher penalties. We will have a crime of... Um, Economic sabotage, if you commit this using more than three or victimizing more than three. So all other are penal in nature. But essentially, these are the features which we think, if it becomes a law, will have additional protection for our financial consumers and to prevent all of these things from happening. So essentially, that's in a nutshell, this particular AFASA bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Attorney Kapule.
perhaps we can dispense with the DICT's presentation for this public hearing and they can make it during the executive session. So at this point, we'll start uh, asking questions, starting, I, I just have a few questions, and then Senator Gachelian will ask also some questions. Uh, I'd like to ask the PNP first, of those uh, various forms, common forms of, uh, uh, just to review the presentation, what is the most common that you've encountered in terms of uh, uh, sc uh, financial scamming between the smishing, vishing, mish uh, uh, mishing, and... Uh, what is the most common that... Uh... Uh, as we presented, uh, Mr. Chair, is the online uh, uh, online selling uh, scam. So, ginagawa po ito normally sa mga Facebook, nag-o-offer ng mga ibebenta, ihingi ng uh, down payment, pagkatapos may pasok yung down payment to a bank account or GCash account or any wallet, ay mawawala na lang yung uh, pinag-depositohan uh, ng uh, advance payment. At, at hindi nakukuha yung, at hindi nakukuha yung, yung product. Yes. Uh, pero siguro related din yan sa consumer. May ginagawa kaming uh, in, uh, yes, Internet sir. Transactions Act. So related din yan yes, sa... Sir. Related po siya doon sa... Opo. Pero sa financial, in terms of pure financial transactions, ano po yung pinaka-madalas na na-encounter nyo po sa PNP? Uh, yun pong uh, makakatanggap yung isang uh, individual ng uh, phishing link kapag uh, na-click papasok ka doon sa isang website for example is a BDO requesting for the uh, updating of your credentials so ipapasok mo lahat doon yung uh, pangalan mo username mo password mo din nakukuha na nila uh, so parang kunwari ano sila bank sila tapos yes sir uh, magme-message sila sa iyo and yes, then sir. pag nag pag kinlik actually may nakukuha din akong ganyan eh yes, hindi ko lang so makukuha na sa yung credentials mo and then they can transfer your account so hindi mo na ita-type yung credentials mo kukunin na lang sa device mag mo mag-update po kayo doon sir pag nag-update ka makukuha uh, nila lahat yung mga personal information mo lahat and how many ilang cases na ba yan ilang uh, cases ba yan i don't have the exact number here kasi po uh, consolidated itong ano but we can we can uh, we can generate a specific number of these incidents uh, after this committee hearing. And how do you catch the perpetrators? Uh, as, I, as we have presented in our uh, presentation, uh, doon kami pagdating sa dulo, which is, papasok na tayo sa bank po eh. Mm. So, uh, nag-apply kami ng uh, cyber warrant for the warrant to disclose uh, computer Pero data. Pero hindi sila, abot, abot ba sila sa bank? Kasi fake yung site, di ba? Ipapansin nila. And then, gagamitin nila yung information para ma-access yung actual bank account yes, nila. Yes, yes. So, pag... Uh, ang, ang investigation po kasi na PNP roon, aabot talaga doon sa banko eh. So, kukuha kami ng mga information doon sa banko at kailangan namin ng cyber warrant. Mm, a cyber so, warrant. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, And uh, normally, yung sa sa Gcash naman, uh, napapansin namin sa other e-wallets ay... Uh, pag naibigay na sa amin yung information, lumalabas na fictitious yung uh, identity. So, andun lagi yung aming problema dahil fictitious yung identity, we cannot file cases against those fictitious uh, personalities. So, hindi niya talaga matrace kung sino yung nagsimula sa scam or kung sino yung... Hindi, hindi, na, hindi sila natitrace... Kailangan po kasi roon na ma-identify namin kung kanino yung account eh. Yes. Kasi siya ang kakasuhan namin ah. dahil sa kanya pumasok yung pera. Mm. So pag hindi namin kilala kung sino yung tao na yun, na na kaninong account yun, sinong tao na yun, so we cannot file cases against the suspect. So in other words, nakukuha niyo naman yung number dahil siyempre binigay sa victim yung number and yes, ng account yes. para yes, ma-deposit yes, yung pera. The name... Pero once na makuha mo, wala na. Kasi hindi niyo alam kung sino yung may-ari ng account. Yes, your honor. I see. Okay. Fictitious yung owner. May pay pangalan, may number, but fictitious. Fictitious so, yung owner ng account? Yes, your owner. Uh, so sayang na kung ipapile namin yung kaso na hindi naman non-existent yung tao. Yung uh, tunay na tao. Ah, uh, okay. So how, how do you react to that? Yung creation of fictitious accounts? Paano ba nakakalusot sa... Uh, yeah. banking system yung mga ganyan. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, in the banking system, we have a very strict know your client policy. Mm. So assuming that for whatever reason, they were able to create a fictitious account and the bank can be held liable for violation of our KYC rules. 
Uh, uh, there was a case, yung Mark Nagoy, Nagoyo. The case, are, are you familiar with that? Yung, uh, what, what is that? The, the, the similar bank, fake account din yan, di ba? Nakakreate siya ng fake account. Uh, ano Anong mga measures na pwede natin gawin para magiging mas... Uh, Uh, maging mas difficult yung pag-create ng account, ng fictitious account. Anong mga measures kaya pwede natin gawin? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm uh, Head Agent Palmer Malyari. I am currently the Chief of the NBI Anti-Fraud Division. Magandang question po yan. Uh, how do we assure that uh, the information being given to the banks when they open accounts are actually legitimate information? Uh, as far as I know, it's a violation of Republic Act 9160, which is the Anti-Money Laundering Act, that if should a person open an account and give information which is not really true information, apart from being charged with violation of 9160, the one opening the processing, the opening of the account, can also be charged uh, for violation of 9160. Pero sa amin naman po, for law, sa, sa law enforcement, I'd like to, to supplement yung binibigay na answer kanina ni, ni, ano, ni General Hernia na ang trabaho po kasi ng, ng law enforcement is attribution for purposes of filing a case. So, pag sinabi nating attribution, because it's a principle under the NBI, yung tinatawag namin thoroughness and legality, they should be able to make, to, to be able to, ano, to, to attribute to a particular person the commission of, of an offense. Halimbawa, a, a, a bank fraud was actually committed and for some reason the money which was the object of the fraud was transferred to a particular account. Hindi pa pwedeng bagamat binigay po ng victim yung name to where the money was actually deposited. For purposes of us complying, complying with the principle of thoroughness and legality, kailangan masiguro namin na talagang it's an actual account existing with the bank. And for us to be able to know that, Bagamat alam namin na i-decline ng banko ang information with respect to the owner of the account and the address, still, for purposes of us complying with thoroughness and legality, nagpapadala pa rin po kami ng subpina to request for information despite the fact that ina-anticipate namin na i-deny ito ng banko. Pero sa amin po sa NBI, merong dalawang information po kami na hinihingi kapag ang pinag-uusapan natin eh, online bank fraud, bank-related scams. Apart from the information pertaining to the depositor of the account or the owner of the account, hinihingi din po namin yung digital footprint. Because we're talking of an online transaction here. Obviously, the transaction which is being performed over the internet, nagre-raise po yan sa lag reports ng banko. So, hihingin po namin yan from the bank. Inihigin namin yung log reports where the internet protocol address and the date and timestamps pertaining to that transaction. Kinihingi po namin. But for some reason, yung pong information pertaining to account depositors dinideny o dinidecline by reason of the bank secrecy law. Pagdating naman sa digital footprints, most of the time, dinidecline din po ng bank yan by reason of the, uh, the uh, Data Privacy Act. Uh, yes. Problema po talaga ang attribution para sa NBI at PNP. Uh, siguro, baka pwede, baka pwede naman kayo mag-recommend ng mga, uh, siguro, mga regulations that might uh, make it more difficult to create these fictitious accounts. Uh, just done the creation aspect, di ba? Eh, kasi itong Mark Nagoyo, dapat, siguro, dapat sa pangalan pa lang, medyo may, ano na yan eh, may red alert na yan eh, di ba? Medyo mapapaisip ka talaga eh, Mark Nagoyo eh. Diba? Doon pa lang, dapat meron na tayong somehow, I mean, uh, siguro sa umpisa pa lang, dapat meron na tayong regulation para hindi madali yung pag-create ng mga accounts, fictitious accounts. O hindi man siguro madali, pero para matigil yung, uh, yung pag-create ng fictitious accounts. Yeah. If it is committed by a bank, then as I as mentioned earlier, They get hit by violation of the anti-money laundering law. They get get hit by a violation of the BSP and the general banking law. So we are quite strict if a bank will commit that kind of an offense. Say it's actually a mortal sin for the bank to create an account when they do not exercise the diligence expected in know your client. But of course, in other types of accounts, and th that's the problem, Mr. Chair. I think we have to upgrade really the. Yes, uh, And I think uh, you know we have to take uh, cognizance of the 
you know, the new technologies such as artificial intelligence that make it, you know, that create, um, you can create, you know, voices, you know, it makes it uh, possible to recreate certain aspects of a person's uh, personality. So, I mean, we have to take cognizance of these new technologies because they might have an effect. They might even be used to perpetrate these frauds. Uh, Sen Win, baka you have some questions. Uh, Senator Win, uh, Senator Gachelian, if you have thank some questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to pursue your uh, line of questioning. Earlier, you, uh, I think it's General Hernia and uh, BSP mentioned about fictitious account. These are fictitious bank accounts. Tama po ba? Uh, uh, some of them are money mules. And uh, some of them are... Uh, uh, using the account of uh, parang binibenta yung owner. Okay, but uh, binibenta yung bank account? Di pinapagamit yung kanilang bank account. Pinapagamit yung kanilang bank account. But the owner of the bank account are real people. They're uh, real individuals. I'm talking about Gcash, uh, uh, your owner. Uh -huh. uh, yung account gagawin ng isang individual ipapagamit na yung account to another individual, to scammers. Okay. Uh, nangyayari po ito dahil sa... Ang opening po kasi ngayon ng bank account normally is through uh, online. Eh. So yung uh, KYC, uh, doon nagkukulang po sa tingin ko yung honor doon sa KYC. Dahil online, so tulad ng mga presentation ng mga previous mga hearings, yung pwedeng makapag-rehistro ka Uh, yung system, ulang sa, I mean, hindi ganun ka-efficient ang system, pagka uh, nagrehistro ng pangalan sa kumuha ng pictures, hindi siya, wala siyang algorithm na pwedeng identify na uh, yung tao mismo eh. So, so I think it's the online, doon sa online po tayo when, nagkukulang. When you mention fictitious account, you're pertaining to Gcash account, not the traditional bank accounts. Tama po ba? There are also uh, fictitious account doon sa ba mga banko yung ono dahil online din ang opening ng bank account. Okay. So Because you can uh, upload fictitious documents doon sa online application. Okay. So in other words, it also it also happens to uh, to the traditional bank accounts. So both GCash they have they have uh, money mules with with Traditional bank accounts, they also have money mules. Uh, only for banks that allows online opening of accounts. But that's the trend now, tiba. Right? I mean, uh, uh, all banks, I would, I would assume all banks would want to go online opening of accounts because uh, during the pandemic, one thing we learned is we cannot go to the banks physically. So I, I think most of the banks now, they have that online... Uh, opening of account. Some of them, uh, I remember, some of them even claim that you can have an account with zero balance and you get it in same day or maybe same hour. You know, I, I think may mga ganun akong nabasa. So, na, na, I'm, I'm asking that is because I want to ask BSP, where does the KYC come into play uh, when it comes to online opening of accounts? Does it still apply? Yes, Mr. Chair, it still applies. Now, I think the challenge now is if you simply upload documents and then you look at the camera, then, of course, you have lesser parameters to really scrutinize the client. But even though they are allowed to open accounts virtually or electronically, they should exercise the same degree of diligence, meaning it can never be an excuse that it is online, the opening is online. So they have to validate this. They have to double check whether or not these are actual persons. They have to look into the records, etc. Meaning it's not a, uh, they just receive it and then an account is created. That's why they usually send thank you letters no, for opening an account. So they have to check the address. So they are still obliged to follow the regular KYC. If that is even for Gcash, even for digital wallets, is that do they follow the same strict KYC procedures? Uh, it's different, Your Honor, for uh, for. Oh, yung mga unggoy pwede rin magbukas ng e-wallet. Kasi I remember in NBI demonstrated that un mga, mga unggoy, hindi mukhang unggoy, ah, unggoy talaga ito eh. No? Nagbubukas ng, uh, ng uh, nakakakuha ng, pre ng SIM card. No? Is it the same with 
with have you tested that with e-wallets uh for gcash or honor uh they have they have upgraded uh, their system now meron silang parang liveness check na so medyo iba na ngayon uh but before we experienced a lot of those cases na talagang fictitious eh pwedeng 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 talaga gawin yung uh Ibang picture ang i-upload mo nung ar- nung so it can happen preview. also. But now, it's, it's quite difficult. Difficult now. Okay. All right. They have improved their system already. Okay. No, but the reason why I'm asking is, uh, I'm, I'm trying to lay down the basics first. Uh, whether, uh, number one, the KYC is applicable to e-wallets. Because the KYC seems to be the filter. Whether to filter and also to know uh, whether the account holder is a real person or not, or or we have some some form of accountability. So I'm asking BSP directly: Are e-wallets covered by the KYC rule? Because yeah. for all intents and purposes, the e-wallets are just like any other bank accounts. Eh? In but, fact, I was telling uh, Mark, I have a. Meron po akong GCash. I use that for small bills. Yeah, Mr. it's Chair. really like uh, like an account, and it's more convenient because you can use it. In 7-Eleven, in, uh, yeah. in, in gas stations. It's more convenient than credit card and uh, typical ordinary bank account. So, But my, my point is, it's, it, it operates just like any other bank account. So is it covered? Yes, Mr. Chair, because these are electronic money issues. Okay, so it's covered. So it's covered by our regulation. So in other words, PayMaya, Gcash, uh, the other e-wallets that are... I would assume regulated and accredited by DSP go through the same yeah, KYC. They have to have the same uh, standards no, for compliance with our regulations like KYC. Okay. And how Let's, come... Uh, Senator Wynn, I think uh, if... Sorry. Uh, if I, I think the Anti-Money Laundering Council attorney had, has something to uh, comment with your... Uh, with what was what we were discussing with your question. Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Senator. For the AMLC, under uh, the Anti-Money Laundering Act, the covered persons, which also include banks and also payment operators like GCash, are required to maintain KYC documents within their system. And they are required also to uh, install a system that could verify the identity of their customers, including the bank account owners, and any uh, records also that they are that they that uh, these owners account owners file with the covered person, including banks and payment operators, since they sh they are required to do some veri verification in order to uh, ensure that the true identity of their customers. So if, if that being the case, how come there are fake fake uh, uh, fictitious account fictitious e wallets and fictitious bank accounts? If they go through the same KYC process, how come the PNP and NBA are experiencing fictitious accounts? In theory, dapat wala ng fictitious accounts, correct? Uh, Senator, in fact, the, what we call fictitious accounts are really, most of them are true accounts, bank okay. accounts or uh, e-wallet accounts, but there are fictitious identities of the alleged account holders of these accounts. These are not really fictitious accounts. They have accounts with GCash, with the banks, and with the e-wallets, but the identity of the perpetrators are hidden or uh, fictitious. And so, so the ID that they submit are also fictitious, the identification IDs, they're also fictitious. If that's the case. Yeah, in some of our, our investigations, particularly money laundering investigations, we receive reports that they uh, submit fake IDs, fake, ide fake identity documents, and uh, th and these are these persons are really the perpetrators, but some of them are also using the accounts of other persons. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you very much. I think that's. Uh... A uh, very informative, and uh, thank you. Um, so, at, at this point, uh, to give way to the uh, to the uh, executive session, perhaps we can just ask the other resource persons to submit their position papers within two weeks from this hearing. Uh, we thank everyone for attending this hearing, and we are looking forward on, to your active participation on the discussions that we will conduct for this bill. Uh, with the approval of my colleagues and in consideration of the executive session, I would like to suspend this hearing to another date and proceed to the executive session. So moved. Your Honor would like to um, ask 
representatives from the PNP, the ICT, CICC, BSP, NBI, and BAP, BAP, for the executive session. The rest, may uh, may you please leave the room for the executive session. For the senators, uh, only one staff is allowed per senator to remain. Thank you, sir. NBI po kasama sa executive session.